Well, Craig, tell me about how rugby as a sport first entered your life. It was probably Litchfield Rugby Club back when I was, geez, what, six years old. Um, dragged out the house on a Sunday by my parents. Um, raining, obviously. Wouldn't have it any other way. It took many years to find my position. I think I went across every position in the backs. Uh, ended up at scrum half, I think, as a lot of referees seem to do. And then you become poacher turned gamekeeper when you, you take up the whistle. Um, as for being any good, depends who you ask. <laughs> if you ask my brother, uh, no. Um, he was better than me, therefore I had to look to do something different so I could be better than him. Uh, it's not often I agree with my brother, but he probably had a point. And yeah, in reality, it's because I got injured. And that's, that's then where I turned to refereeing. I spent two years in the real world uh, working in pharma. Um, rocked up here to a meeting, had no idea I was about to get tapped on the shoulder by, by Tony Spreadbury. And he basically went, there's a contract here, are you, are you interested? Um, I probably said yes far too quickly, um, especially I hadn't told my mum at that point. Parents actually were quite sceptical to start with. Um, they'd seen me go through university, get a job in pharmaceutical science, and like, you're going to throw that all away. Um, but it boiled down to the fact that look, it's, it's a hobby turned a job. You, you'd regret your, that decision if you were to turn it down. So it was a no-brainer in the end, it had to be taken. You get to, to operate in some pretty unique environments and you still need to pinch yourself to remind yourself that your hobby's a job and that's a pretty lucky place to be. And if you don't enjoy that, yeah, I'd, I'd question why you're doing it. And in the last few years, you've had the opportunity to referee over the Rainbow Laces weekends, um, which probably resonate with you given the relevance it has on a personal level. The Rainbow Laces campaign sort of, it brings back into the headlines stories from like Nigel Owens or Sam Stanley um, sort of their coming out stories, which while I was in the closet um, were a source of support, comfort. Like it made it really clear to me while I was struggling to accept who I was that you could be a part of elite sport. It's not about who you love, it's about how good you are. And that, that message sort of resonated with me massively. But I thought I was ready to come out probably two years into my pharmaceutical job. And then literally as I was preparing to do that, the job offer came up here. I very quickly realised that, yeah, I hadn't fully accepted it myself. Um, it's the same old adage, you can't ask others to love you until you've, you've learned to love yourself. Um, yeah, then another two years down the line, I got to that point. I came out just before I went to Manchester for the under-20s uh, World Championship. So I told friends and family before I headed, headed there. I had a really successful tournament, actually. And then, in terms of telling the, the refs here and the rest of my friends, it's 6am in an airport before I'm about to go to Greece on a family holiday. I pinged a WhatsApp message out, turned the phone off for about eight hours. After a few too many wines in Greece, turned it back on and yeah, the reaction was, was very positive to, to say the least. I certainly forgot personally how much effort it was to keep up that false pretense. You spend a lot of energy like, what story have I told to this person? What's the name of this imaginary girlfriend that I'm seeing? And then when that, when that weight is lifted, yeah, you can be truly you, you can be authentically you, you can enjoy life and yeah, the, that energy that I spent living a lie can now be reinvested into just being me and that, that was truly liberating. My personal experiences, it's, yeah, it's been really positive. People either, it's not an issue or they're, they're overly supportive, take an interest, want to ask how they can help or support you in, in, in whatever way. And that's both here at, here at Twickenham and across the pro game, but also the community game, which I think the, the key with the Rainbow Laces campaign, it's not just a, a pro and campaign, it's across the whole game. I think it's good to put that focus on it, that rugby is a, a sport for everyone, irrespective of who you love, gender, religion, it, all it really cares about is you enjoying yourself and expressing yourself in the medium of rugby. Um, so yeah, I think there is a real, a real relevance to it. And I don't think we can be complacent. Um, things have moved on massively, but that doesn't mean that they can't be made better. I understand how powerful other people's stories were when I was in the closet. So if I can, through talking, opening up more, help just one person in that position I was in those years ago, then that's a positive from my perspective.